I'm a cowboy and couldn't be happier. I look forward to working along Coach McCarthy, the staff, and my teammates to be the best team we can be in pursuit to our goal of a Super Bowl. So as usual, Dak Prescott says exactly the right thing. His brother, meanwhile, Tad, had a very different reaction on Twitter. He said, there was a reason I was never a Dallas Cowboys fan growing up or before they drafted Dak. After today, who knows how much longer I'll be cheering for them. So there's really two sides to that story. Let's first get the information from our Cowboys reporter. Here's Todd Archer who gets up with us this morning. Todd, you raised the question in your most recent column on ESPN.com. Are the Cowboys and Dak Prescott now headed towards an inevitable divorce? Well, Greeny, you certainly can't dismiss it. And let's use history as a guide. There's been two quarterbacks to play at least one season on a franchise tag, and neither signed a long-term deal with their teams. San Diego with Drew Brees, well, they had Phillip Rivers waiting in the wings, so they moved on from him. Washington tagged Kirk Cousins twice. They probably never really loved him, and the feeling was mutual, so they let him walk. And now with the Cowboys, this has opened up a possibility that we probably didn't think there was a chance of happening not too long ago. And we all remember the dark time the Cowboys had from Troy Aikman to Tony Romo, and they similarly got lucky, obviously, when they got Dak Prescott in the fourth round in 2016. Short of winning a Super Bowl, Greeny, I, I just don't know what changes. The Cowboys are still going to want a five-year deal. He's still going to want a four-year deal. W what one side will have to move, and, and and they didn't move this time. Well, here, here's I'm reminded the something that Jerry Jones said during the Zeke, the, the, the Zeke talks, right? Jerry yeah. goes, when have I not gotten a deal done? Well, to Greeny, we have an answer. Yeah. They, they didn't get a deal done. He didn't get a deal done, and there are ramifications. I mean, here's one of the things that happens now. Can you describe what happens to the Cowboys' salary cap if Dak plays on the franchise tag the next two seasons, because the money will be about $69 million. Well, it, this is where the, the interesting thing comes in from the cap perspective when we wonder about the effects of the pandemic on the NFL going forward. If the cap is flat or goes down, the Cowboys would not have enough room under the cap to fit that $37.7 million tag should they go that route again on Prescott in 2021. Now, they can make it work, though. It, it cut some players, restructure contracts, De Demarcus Lawrence, Zach Martin, Amari Cooper, pick a whole bunch of guys. But what that does is rob future cap space and add to those guys' numbers going forward. So it's not a great, it's not an impossible path. It's just not an ideal path. All right. It's, it's the old robbing Peter to pay Paul. We talked about it a million times, and this is where they find themselves. Todd, thank you very much. Well done. Let me uh, get a little perspective on all of this as we have RC and Nick with us this morning. And the great Jalen Rose is here. And Jalen, so you know I always come to you to interpret the stuff that people say. So uh, the quotes again, Dak Prescott <laughs> said all the right things. Dak said exactly what you would expect him to say. He couldn't be happier. Meanwhile, his brother says what you're thinking he really thinks, which is I was never a fan of the Cowboys to begin with, and now I'm not going to be anymore. <laughs> so Jalen, who should we believe? His brother's saying what the family's saying behind the scenes during those quarantine parties when more than too many people should be socially gathering <laughs> in the kitchen, including Ezekiel Elliott. He's saying the real. And that's Zach. Dak's unhappy with the Dallas Cowboys, and he should be. <clears throat> this leads to a frustration, I'm telling you, Greeny, that goes deep-rooted about that quarterback <clears throat> position in black players. You don't get a chance to get paid early like Jimmy Garoppolo or make it to the Super Bowl once like Jared Goff and get taken care of. Or your team wins the Super Bowl without you and Carson <clears throat> Wentz and they still give you top dollar. It still permeates in the league. We have to continue to prove ourselves time and time and time again. Look at Cam Newton. This dude is an MVP in the league. He's playing for $1 million? <clears throat> What about Jameis Winston? He threw for 5,000 yards. Those two guys I just named combined make less money than Chase Daniels. Chase Daniels makes more money than those two accomplished quarterbacks combined. But when names like Ryan Fitzpatrick come up, oh, accomplished. We'll love to have him. Gardner Minshew, oh, yeah, all of the side shows. But these guys are accomplished quarterbacks <laughs> that have outplayed yeah. their contracts, deserve to get paid, and Dak, I hope he ends up somewhere else after he does a Kirk Cousins these next couple of years. You know, it, it is an interesting place that you've taken it, Jalen, so let's go there. And, uh, Dominique, I'll come to you first on this. Hard feelings. I mean, uh, what, what impact, for those of us who are football fans and want to know how this will impact the team, 
there have to be some hard feelings here. What impact do you think they have on Dak and on the Cowboys? So <clears throat> you don't have to know football, follow football to have feelings. And all of us have feelings and emotions. Some of us are good at hiding them and some of us are good at lying about them. But we all know how we would feel if we were underpaid for four years and gave our employer great effort and great pro and, and produce at a high level. And then when it was time for us to get paid, we watch all the other people around us who are not as good at us, good as us and not as important as us and who have made more than me up to this point. We watch them get paid. It's impossible for that not to upset you and bother you. And I think this is a unique situation because no one ever does this to a quarterback the same way that you don't do it to a head coach that you want to keep. Like if a coach is coming up on the last year of his deal they give an extension just because they want him to have authority in the locker room the same thing happens for quarterbacks you give them extensions because their happiness is important to the culture of the locker room and the things that we talked <clears throat> about yesterday and saying that how cam newton is extra motivated so those moments when he's alone and he can choose between turning on xbox or recording a video or playing with his son he can choose between that or studying some extra film, it's likely in those moments because of that motivation, he's gonna study that extra film. And I don't know Dak Prescott, but I could imagine that in those moments, this feeling can impact this, Dak Prescott in that way and maybe negatively feel like, man, I ain't doing that. They don't care about me, they don't respect me. And the same thing will permeate the locker room. They have a new coach. So the person who has the, the tightest grip on the culture of that entire team is Dak Prescott. Rain Dakota Prescott. And y'all pissed him off and alienated him. He's going to come into that locker room. He's going to try to do the best that he can. But anyone around him who knows him will be able to feel, whether they can feel it or not, they know that he's not feeling well. And it's not going to, it's not going to bode well for that entire team. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.